Welcome back to Between Bells. I'm Asia Celestino. For years, journalist Guy Raz has explored the origins of some of the world's best known companies on his NPR podcast, How I Built This, diving into the stories of the innovators, entrepreneurs, and idealists making news and changing the world every day. Well, now he's taking those stories and turning them into a book by the same name. And joining us now is Guy Raz himself. So, Guy, thank you so much for joining us. I have to ask, what inspired you to go from podcast to book? You know, so many people listen to the show, and they have um, told us that this show really has inspired them to pursue their idea. It's given them the courage to kind of break through that fear. And so I really wanted, I really wanted to put a book out into the world for kind of the rest of us. You know, I read business books, but a lot of them, they're wonderful, but they're very abstract and sometimes impenetrable. And I wanted to write a business book that was narrative driven, that really showed people how to create a business or introduce an idea into the world through the stories of people that we now you know, think of as heroes. The only difference between them and us is that they went into the phone booth, put on the cape, and then, you know, flew off into the sky. The idea with the book is that it's designed to be the, the phone booth to basically say, come on in, put on the cape. You're you're no different than anybody else. You just need the cape to give you that extra boost and go and 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 create something, build something. I love that metaphor so much. And I have to ask you, um, over the course of this podcast and this book, what traits have you found really make a successful entrepreneur? You know, there are so many. There's obvious ones like resilience and optimism and and perseverance. But the one that I I consistently find again and again is the ability to withstand rejection. And this is a learned trait. This is not an innate trait that everybody, you know, these entrepreneurs have. This is something they learn, which is why so many entrepreneurs start out in sales, because in sales, you're going door to door every single day. And those doors are being slammed in your face. You're hearing no again and again and again. And it's great training that prepares you to accept no and to continue to move on until you get to a yes once you start a business. Because you will hear a lot of no's. You will hear a lot of rejection. And the only way to overcome it is to keep pushing through th that, that rejection and those no's until you get to a yes. And every single entrepreneur I've interviewed has developed that skill, that ability to withstand rejection. It is a trait that anybody can develop. You just have to expose yourself to enough rejection until you gain the thick skin to steal yourself to be able to say, okay, no problem. I'll move on and keep going. Easier said than done. And I think you can understand that, especially because you're putting a lot of these stories in the limelight. But how does the book sort of, rather than just inspiring readers, how does it really set readers up to develop those skills, like the ones that you just mentioned with resilience? Well, I'll give you an example, right? Because um, I actually really believe it's a developed trait. If you look at, we've had, a, this is a sort of a weird example, but we've had a lot of Mormon entrepreneurs on the show, the official name of the church, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. Um, I'll use Mormon for shorthand, so apologies to, to Mormons listening. Um, most young Mormons at age 19 are sent on a mission somewhere around the world. They've got to go uh, to some, some part of the world and try and convince people to read the Book of Mormon and to become a member of the faith. Well, they're, sl they're knocking on a thousand doors a week. And, and, and getting 999 people slamming those doors in their faces. And they've got to be resilient and polite and carry on. Over that two-year period, they really develop the ability to, to understand that rejection and no is part of life. And when those kids come back to the U.S. at age 21, you will find that they're much better equipped to take on the world, to start a business, to, to try something on their own. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become a Mormon missionary. The point is, is that it is a learned skill. Not every single kid goes out there wanting and, you know, to, to, to hear, hear rejection again and again. But after two years of hearing it, they understand that it's normal. It's part of life. And so, again, these are skills and traits that can be learned and, 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 and developed. You know, you, you're not entrepreneurs are not naturally born. They are made. And this book is full of examples of how that happens. It sounds like a lot of this content is for entrepreneurs who are just trying to make the leap. What about for business owners who already established their product or service, whatever it may be? 
it's not for people who are just trying to make the leap. I mean, this book is for, look, this book is for anybody who's thinking about starting a business and now is actually an incredibly interesting time to do so. It's for anybody who is in the middle of it, who's in the grind, or anybody who wants to be inspired by the stories of people who did. So look, if you work for a big company and you want to introduce a new idea or a concept, or you want to change the way your business works, that creates friction. That's challenging. It, it requires strength and energy and courage to do it. And so this book is also designed for people who, who are prepared to introduce a disruptive idea into the world because essentially a business or a new idea is the result of identifying a problem. You know, you are working for a company or you're standing in line in a coffee shop or wherever you might be and you will see something that isn't working for you. It's a problem. And you think to yourself, that problem needs to be solved. It will solve my problem and it will probably solve other people's problems. So how can I do that? How can I solve the problem? And once you figure that out, once you have that idea, that's your business or that's the change that you're going to introduce in your workplace. So the book is really designed to be a guide and a coach told through the narratives and stories of hundreds of the most inspiring entrepreneurs on planet earth. Guy, really quickly here, a lot of business owners and aspiring business owners facing uncertainty with the pandemic. How can they learn to take a lot of this inspiration and pivot during this time? Look, right now is a moment for radical, radical thinking. This is a time to be, it's, I call it radical necessity. You have got to try things that you wouldn't have done otherwise in, you know, in, in quote unquote normal times, because this is an unprecedented situation. But I think customers are much more forgiving. You know, for example, Zumba, um, you know, they, they introduced an online platform that enables their instructors to continue to teach Zumba because so many fitness centers are closed. They, they mounted that in six weeks. The founders of Zumba told me in normal times, it would have taken a year and a half to mount that. And it would have to, be, would have, have to have been perfect and et cetera, et cetera. They did it in six weeks. It was good enough and they've improved it over time. That's the kind of radical thinking that everybody needs to have right now to keep their businesses going, to help, help them stay afloat while we weather the storm. Journalist Guy Raz, thank you so much for joining us and providing a lot of that inspiration and insight. You can buy his book, How I Built This, The Unexpected Paths to Success from the World's Most Inspiring Entrepreneurs, now.